everyone, uh, my name is Rebecca and I am the founder of Loan Design Club and we are here today with uh, Lucy Hain from the Department of International Trade and we're about to um, have our brand masterclass in our July concept store here in London um, and just before we start we thought it would be a great idea to get Lucy on camera mm -hmm. and on sound and um, ask her some questions um, and find out a little bit more about what she does her advice about taking about a brand or a designer choosing to take their brand uh, global international um, and a little bit more about uh, tips tricks of the trade mm -hmm. and things to be prepared for before you make that decision hello Rebecca uh, thank you great so let's get stuck in then quickly do you want to just tell us what your job title is yeah um, who do you work for um, and basically what what does your job entail Okay, so uh, I work for the Department of International Trade as a, a trade advisor um, and my job involves supporting brands of all different sizes in international exports. So I work with everybody from body shop taking 800 million to an SME brand who has just started exporting who might be taking less than 50,000 pounds a year. Okay, great. So very wide berth there. Mm -hmm. And specifically fashion, or do you cover other areas too? Uh, I cover, well, my role is fashion and e-commerce, but that could, in, that could mean home, it could mean accessories, footwear, fashion, menswear, women's wear, anything that involves uh, fashion and e-commerce. Yeah. Okay, cool. And when you say fashion and e-commerce, is that um, taking brands physically taking their product abroad and selling to stores, or is it also helping them launch uh, online in new markets? Uh, well I think I think that's really changed so I think in the old days probably brands started and then decided to go global but I think nowadays brands are like as BFC says born global I totally agree. Um, so basically from day one they can actually be shipping anywhere in the world um, and so yeah I, I work with brands who export via trade shows who export only online who export only in stores you know complete range yeah, amazing. And how did you get into this? What is your background? Uh, so my background is high street retail, and I've worked for most of the big brands on high street, um, probably all the ones who are struggling now, so M&S, <laughs> <laughs> Tethenham's, River Island, Monsoon, uh, and uh, so I've spent 20 plus years in retail, oh. in operations and in merchandising, um, and became a consultant for a couple of years and then DIT approached me and, and asked me if I would join them. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I've been there for about five months now. Okay, yeah, so quite yes. new, not yeah. so long. Okay, yeah. exciting. Um, okay, so let's get stuck in then. Um, first question, why would a designer choose to go global? Well, I think very simply to expand their market. There's only a certain number of people in this country and particularly with niche products, um, why only uh, ex export to, or why only sell to the UK when you can actually ex sell to the whole world? You know, why not go global? Completely. Um, and taking, um, you know, that decision for a brand to take their business into a new market. Um, I mean, yes, with online and e-commerce, I completely agree with what you said. You know, we are, brands are now these days born global, which is amazing. Um, but being able to really penetrate a new market um, how would it how would a brand decide which market or how to go about that entry well I think it's really taking a very good look at their product and uh, and who their customer might, customer might be and then working out um, who their target markets are going to be so for example I work with a, a vegan footwear brand so it's really identifying do some doing some research identifying where the big markets are for that particular product um, and then targeting that market so it's, okay. it's really about targeting the markets that are right for your product rather than just saying right okay I'm just going to target USA and mm. China is that necessarily right for your product or should you be a lot more strategic yeah. uh, and look at who is wearing your product if it's a large size brand where are your biggest markets biggest thing I'm not I don't mean that in the in a funny way but um, yeah. Where are the markets who are have your have your customers? If it's a, a petite size brand, size brand, so it's really about looking at which yeah. are the luxury markets, which are the women's wear markets, which are the swimwear markets, mm. and targeting them strategically. And is there anything a brand can do? So say so I have so obviously we work with lots of small businesses, and one of the big um, 
questions we get asked or one of the the big, uh, I guess the big exciting point is the designer will come to us and say, oh, you're, you're in Milan, you're going to Shanghai, I want to come. Yeah. And my immediate thought is, why? What, why do you want to, to do this? Like, you mm-hmm. surely have a reason. Um, it's not just like, oh my God, it sounds exciting, I get to go abroad. What, so with that in mind, what, um, what should a designer be looking for? Or what tools can they use or data can they look at to work out whether or not a certain market would be a right fit. Is there anything that they're probably collecting that they maybe don't realize that would be a good sign? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if they've got a website, a very easy place to start on the website and Instagram is are they being targeted by particular customers from particular markets? Is there international interest already? But, but before we even get to that point, first thing I would say is have they got the financials? Have they got the trademark? And have they got the IP protection? So that's what they need to have, first of all, before they even start doing anything else. Yeah. They need to be have trademarked their brand, protected their brand, and also you need to be confident that they've actually got the uh, financials, if the brand takes off, to be able to actually support mm. um, that expansion. And so let's start with financials then. What? Let's go a little bit deeper because I think this is something that we get asked a lot. Um, and again, it goes back to my first point. Mm. I've got a brand and I love London and it's going well. I'm selling online. I'm doing some pop-ups. I've got some stockists. I now want to go international. You guys are going to Milan or Shanghai. I want to come. Um, but I'm a small brand. I'm a one-man band or I have maybe a team of two or three. Um, what are the like realistic financial implications that a designer needs to consider and are we and what are we talking in terms like length of time because i think this is another um easy misconception about going global that it's a one-time fix or it's like a oh i'm just gonna pop over to italy make lots of money come home and suddenly i'll have a bit of a base there which from our experience is a little bit of a pre misconception Mm, yeah, I, I think um, it's, a, it's a bit like when you go to a trade show your first trade show isn't necessarily going to be the best and it's about building building a base you know your pre-work do you contact buyers before you go do you contact people before you go do you do some advertising in a different language uh, and then you go out there and, and try and arrange some meetings while you're out, actually out there to build on that mm. but also have your production ready that if it does take off that you can actually um, back up your sales yeah because the last thing you want is to sell out and then not be able to get any production for another six months so you need to actually have uh, be able to uh, back up the sales if you if it suddenly takes off yes definitely and in terms of a brand that is serious about entering um, you know penetrating a new market in terms of timeline realistically you know what are we what are we kind of talking um, you know, like I just said, it's not a let's go to, to Milan and suddenly it's going to go great. Um, but what are we, I guess, what are we looking at from a designer perspective in terms of that slow growth? Well, I mean, you know, so, some brands do make it. You do have brands that, that have overnight success. But I think when you delve a bit deeper, very few brands have overnight success. Mm-hmm. You're really, most brands, even the ones that look like they've had overnight success, have really been struggling and, ch- you know, working on their launches for three four five years Mm -hmm. uh, and then suddenly they make it very few you know have instant um success and it may be because somebody a particular person has suddenly started wearing their outfits Mm -hmm. um but i think really it's about that constant very hard work and and building on your success day by day Mm -hmm. yeah okay which makes complete sense and i and probably i'm guessing you know if Kind of up to five years is realistic for a normal brand or mm-hmm. for a, you know standard. Um, but then overnight. everything has changed. I mean, you you know that yeah. because it's a, this is a completely different concept. So totally, I, in a way, I'm kind of work, working slightly in the dark here as well because obviously, you know, I think Rebecca, you prove that actually you can turn the market on its head. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, who knows? Let's have, <laughs> let's go for overnight success. <laughs> but is it? Would it be fair to say that even you know even overnight success sounds a bit like twenty four hours? Yes. Realistically, we're talking six months. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. talking six months. We're talking. And that's yeah. absolute under one percent would have that effect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's very important. Yes. Um, especially the younger designers, we get that a lot. It's suddenly. Yeah. You know. Um. Okay, very interesting. So, um, what is the co- most common mistake that you see um, brands make trying to enter new markets? I think the, 
probably not having their trademark, particularly going into China yes. because uh, chi China has the um, situation of first registration. They have a first registration law. So wh whoever registers your brand has the rights to your brand. So it's really mm -hmm. important before you even think, think about going near China that you've registered your brand. And there's quite a few examples of very famous names that we could probably drop and that have had some serious issues with this, right? Yes, although I don't have one off the top of my head. But you Mary Katrantsu? Oh, that, yes. Yeah, yeah that was absolutely. quite a famous one, yeah. wasn't it? I feel yeah. like I remember they, and then it was a huge lawsuit and a lot yes. of money, and it was a massive challenge. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and it's, it's ama it amazes me, actually, the first conversation I have with a brand is, have you registered your trademark? And the number of brands who say no, mm. do you know any lawyers? And I'm like, Jesus. yeah, we do. <laughs> Why are you even thinking about but, going international yet? Um, and actually, it's, I mean, although, yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent amount of money. It's £1,200 mm. to register your brand for China, but that's £1,200 okay. really well spent. Yeah, think. and that's just for China. What about the rest of the world? What is your uh, advice on that? I, I mean, I would always try and go for global trademark. Um, I, I don't, I should know off the top of my head, but I don't, I mean, I, I only know the £1,200 uh, because I've just had a few brands that have looked into it. Mm -hmm. But I reckon globally you could probably protect your brand for, say, two and a half grand. But I would, e even if you start with China, you, you've actually done quite a lot um, because that's probably the most difficult one. Yeah, definitely. And it takes quite a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we've talked about financials. We've talked about trademarks. In terms of so not having a trademark and thinking you could enter China, what is your opinion on that I just think it's really risky or going you may lose your brand you may get there and somebody will immediately register your brand and that's it you can't you can't get your trademark back mm -hmm. so definitely you need to have uh, trademark protection before you go into China and how about for Europe or even UK uh, no plenty of brands are trading without it I don't think because also the UK works slightly differently in that providing you can prove Providing you've got enough material with your IP on it, you know, you've got your website, you've got your um, business, I mean, to some extent, even registering your business at Companies House protects you. And providing you've got email proof and all the rest of it, you can prove that you own a brand. Mm. So it, it's not so much of an issue, but China works slightly differently. Yeah. And, okay, so we've talked about financials, trademark, and I think the last, the last kind of really key point or area that we focus on is getting the products into a country. Yes. Um, it varies all over the world, but what are your kind of thoughts, especially on China and maybe the difference to Europe or other or America? Work with your freight forwarder and get some advice. You know, make sure people like DHL are really clued up on how to get your, your product in. Don't just think that you can just send it into a market and it will get there and it will get back because it won't. You really need to get some advice. Um, you know, Russia, for example, you need vast amounts of certification. You need product weight, pro product composition, all of those things. In some markets you need translation, some markets won't allow children's wear in unless it's been tested. Um, and China has a huge amount of testing, including testing on animals. So unless you're, te unless you're trading cross-border, which almost means that you trade as a showroom, um, as an online business, it, you can't just import your product in to China instantly. You have, a, you have to have a lot of certification. Mm. Okay. And I think lastly, let's finish with, do you have any key tips um, uh, for small businesses? You know, how can we make it as successful as possible? Any little kind of you know, last minute takeaways? I would, I would start um, stalking some key uh, uh, buyers and some department stores now uh, and start building those relationships, stalk them on Instagram, contact them, say you're going to be in Shanghai, contact the embassy, build those networks with the embassy. Um, and also make sure your website says that you ship worldwide mm. and your Instagram says that you ship worldwide so people know. That's, yeah, that is a good point. That's Great, good. okay, I think that's everything. Thank you so much, Lucy. For sure. Great. <laughs>